Path of Exile has a long history of introducing new bosses. Back in the day we had Atziri, and more recently we have the Searing Exarch and Eater of Worlds. Along with many of these new bosses, there is what I'm going to call the Jewel Tax. That is, some sort of unique jewel the boss drops, which adds previously unavailable functionality, so powerful that you're basically forced to include it in your build. A perfect example of this is when the Elder was added. In fact, a lot of people watching this video now might not have even been playing PoE back when the Elder was added. And with the Elder came Watcher's Eyes, a jewel that was incredibly powerful, so strong that you basically had to include it in every build, and even today, there's very few builds that aren't objectively improved by including a Watcher's Eye. From there, quite a while passed before PoE introduced another major end boss. The next one we saw was Cirrus, the Awakener. And what did he bring with him? Well, Thread of Hope. Thread of Hope is another incredibly powerful endgame jewel. It acted like an intuitive leap, but instead of being isolated to a small circle around the jewel, it was a much larger ring, and that ring had different sizes, which meant you could gain access to notables that an intuitive leap could only dream of. Now, with 317, Siege of the Atlas, we have yet another incredibly powerful jewel that's going to continue taxing your skill tree. Or, actually, it's a little more accurate to say we have three jewels this time. Forbidden Flesh, Forbidden Flame, and Melding of the Flesh. Forbidden Flesh and Forbidden Flame, though, are a little more complicated, so that'll be a topic for another video. Today, I'm going to be talking about Melding of the Flesh, which is the most powerful defensive jewel ever added in Path of Exile. Something that I wouldn't be surprised if it was nerfed either by the penalty being increased or the top end of a bonus being reduced. It's just that good. The way melding of a flesh works is you get between minus 70 and minus 80% to all elemental resistances. This is going to make it a lot harder to cap your resistances. However, it comes with the upside that your elemental resistances are limited by your highest maximum. So if you have 90% max fire, you effectively have 90% max all elemental res. The reason this is so powerful is elemental damage in Path of Exile is balanced around having 75% resistance. You can never reach 100, so 90% Ellie Res is the best elemental defensive layer you can get in the game. And if you want to think about that downside I mentioned earlier, well, minus 70% all Ellie Res is 210% resistances, which sounds bad, but you can think of as 5 suffixes on your gear. This is still challenging, especially if you're using Chaos Res or have other valuable suffixes, but doable. Think about it this way, a really good ring can have 140-150% to 150 elemental resistance on it, and there's nothing stopping you from running purities with this jewel, in fact, it's often highly encouraged. So what are some practical use case examples? Let's start with a build I'm playing. A Righteous Fire build. Getting as much fire res as possible is always a plus when it comes to RF. You take damage based on your health pool, so more res means you take less damage, and this allows your recovery to work better for damage taken from enemies rather than damage taken from yourself. Because remember, in Path of Exile, you are not your enemy. I have 90% fire res, which means I have 90% Ellie res. The way I get to this is starting at the base 75. I use a shield, which adds 3%, taking me to 78. I run Purity of Fire with some increased aura effect. This gives me another 6%, which takes me up to 84%. I have 2% on my chest, which takes me to 86. And I have 4% on the tree, which takes me up to 90. Another way you could do this, let's say if you are a CI or lowlife build, is you could use Aegis Aurora. You'll again start at 75% resist, the shield will take you up to 80% cold, you can run Purity of Ice with some increased oil effect to get 7%, taking you up to 87, and then finally finish off with 3% on the chest. That is going to be a tier 5 Eldritch modifier, but it's worth it to get to 90 res, and you don't really have to worry about too much else. There's also some advanced uses for this jewel. A good example of this would be Duryani's prototype, something that was called out when the jewel was first introduced. The 80% all res, in this case, is both a detriment and a bonus, because if you're using Duryani's prototype, your goal is to get to negative 200% lightning resistance. You start at negative 60, assuming you have none on gear. Negative 80 from the jewel puts you up to negative 140, and you can catalyze two Venter's gambles to get up to negative 200%. Of course, if you combine this with the previous example, Maybe you're a Doriani's prototype build using Aegis Aurora with Purity of Ice, both to make up some of the resistances lost, as in this case you wouldn't be able to use Purity of Elements, and round out your defenses. 
you'll end up with 90% fire res, 90% cold, negative 200 lightning, and 60 to 90,000 armor, which should give you massive recovery for your energy shield and help prevent both physical and lightning damage from killing you instantly. This is a way Vajul contributes to help making well-rounded defenses and also giving you new defensive options while also offering offensive scaling. If you found a new defensive layer to add to your build, then be sure to leave a like on the video. And if you like finding out about mechanics in Path of Exile, then be sure to sub to the channel and ring the bell to be notified whenever I upload. A special thanks to my patrons for their direct and significant contributions to the success of this channel. But more about that at the end of the video. Melding the Flesh isn't free, but it's an incredibly powerful defensive mechanic, one that I expect more and more people will be using as the league goes on. It's maybe not the easiest thing to do on a budget, but if you can afford to, you should absolutely consider adding this to your build. This is especially the case for anyone using any items that already raise their maximum resistances. If you're using Leadership's Price, for example, you can get one that's plus 3% fire, minus 3% cold and lightning, and just keep scaling your fire res and effectively ignore the penalties. If you're using something like Aegis Aurora, then you're able to get 90% cold, which means you have 90% all Ellie. If you're running a purity or playing a lot with someone who does, again, this means they only need to run one purity, and effectively it transfers over and becomes every purity. It's always been a very effective defense in PoE to have 90% max res, but in the past you had to put in a monumental effort to get there. All Ellie res was fairly difficult to scale, one of your best ways was the Saffle's frame which gives plus 4 all res. There were very few options outside of this, and even as max res kept getting added to gear, it was often to shields or often in very limited amounts. Just go through the tree in gear, and try to get to 90% all without running all three purities. Before now, it would have been quite a challenge, and now it almost seems trivial. What this will mean is bosses that rely on elemental damage, be it the Searing Exarch, the Eater of Worlds, or even the Maven, are far more trivial than they would have been otherwise. It doesn't mean you're immortal, and it doesn't negate the danger of all bosses. Remember, both Atziri and Shaper have penetration, so they're going to negate a significant amount of your Ellie res, meaning their damage still hurts. My current RF build can face tank almost everything that the Searing Exarch and Eater of Worlds does, but if I stand in the Shaper Balls, I'm still going to be in trouble because I effectively have 65% cold res against them, rather than the 90 I'd have otherwise. And again, while the cost is somewhat significant, it's only around 5 suffixes on gear, which for this level of defense, something that you'd previously pay multiple item slots for, is well worth it. But now I'm curious, what builds are you going to use Melding of a Flesh in? Are you going to use it to scale the damage of your Doyani's prototype, or are you going to use it purely defensively? And how do you plan to balance your res to go about that? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below, or join the Discord where you can ask questions, get build help, and hang out with the community. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. They're awesome, and they get to show it by having their name on screen in the credits of all my videos. So if you want to see your name here, be sure to check the link in the description. For more general gaming content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, and if you want a water bottle or a cool shirt, I have a link to my official merch shop in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.